This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 257 of The Real Word. The word is up. All right, Nicole. Uh, what's not up is Airbnb. Actually, they are up, quite honestly. Yeah. The stock is doing very well. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now. I'm I'm totally interrupting, and I just – have you heard of Revolve? Yes. It's called Revolve, right? Or is it Evolve? I mean, I've heard of Revolve, but to your point – I don't have a what point. What about it? it? It sounds like it's it's entering the the space. It's trying to take like fewer fees than Airbnb. I just didn't know if you'd heard of it. I just someone mentioned it today. I have never heard of it before. Yeah, to me that'll be that'll be hard, right? Airbnb sure. kind of has that name yeah. recognition that a Zillow has when you think of real estate search. Yep. When you think of taking an Airbnb, you think of Airbnb. Airbnb. But Airbnb is faced with a battle in some cities. Airbnb restrictions, 25 cities cracking down on short-term rentals. This is on nowbam.com. We'll link it up below as we always do. An insider article highlighted 25 cities in the US and Canada, Nicole, that are cracking down on Airbnbs and other short-term rental properties. Issues such as the depletion of housing for local residents have a fascinating visual to show you in, in just a little bit on that, the depletion of housing yep. for local residents and no uh, noise disturbances have motivated local governments to take action to limit the growth and operation of short-term rentals in their neighborhoods. Okay. COVID pandemic uh, triggered this explosion on short-term rentals. So obviously, Nicole, that created a frenzy for investors the last few years, even more so than you know the late teens 2017 to 2019 even more so than that where investors are like i want to buy airbnbs i want to go out and scoop some of these up uh, i've got some thoughts on that on is this creating a bubble but here are the 25 cities and then we'll get into it that are cracking down on airbnbs alamosa colorado mm -hmm. you thought i was going to screw that i saw I your face did. you thought i was going <laughs> to screw that up I was that obvious, huh? <laughs> okay, I, I'm one for one. Alamosa, I'm gonna have probably have you waiting. fill it. Once I get to a really hard one, I'm gonna have you jump in here. Alamosa, Colorado, yeah. Aspen, Colorado. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Alamosa. I don't Let me either. know in the comments if if you know about Alamosa. But maybe it's like an Aspen. Maybe it's a, a you know, a, a, a seasonal ski. vacation. Yeah. I mean, Aspen, that's a vacation place, and they're and they're cracking down on Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? Very. Atlanta, Georgia. Pretty big place. Is it all of Atlanta? Some of Atlanta? Burlington, Vermont. Another people like to go to Burlington. You like to go to Burlington? I don't. I've I'll be honest, I've never been to Burlington. I never I been. I have like a limit in the car. Burlington is beyond that limit. I like three hours is tops for me in the car. Chattanooga, Tennessee, somewhere I've been. Yep. Chattanooga, nice little place. Um interesting because home prices are are so affordable in Chattanooga. So I could see that the last few years, a lot of investors probably went in there right. trying to do short-term rentals and now they're cracking down. Might not be. Uh, Nicole, why don't you take it over here for get the last 20 here? You're such what? a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to pronounce that. Cor this is in Idaho. It's, Cord it's, uh, Cordeline. It looks Cordeline. Cordeline? Yeah, Cordeline. There Cordeline, you go. Cordeline, Idaho. Something yeah. you'd get at a French restaurant. What Cordeline. else do we have? We got Dallas, Texas. Um, Again, sort of saying, like you were saying before with Atlanta, Dallas is pretty large. I'm curious Very what large. part of that. And I have Airbnb in Dallas before yes, too. Have. So um, interesting to see what's really going to happen there. And then we have Dauphin Island, Alabama. Uh, Dillon, we got a lot in Colorado. Dillon, yeah. Colorado. Number 10 is Frisco, Colorado. 11 is Lexington, Kentucky. And then we're heading down to your to your neck of the woods. Twelve is Marco Island. Yeah, so so Marco, there's a lot of these like high rises. A lot of associations, Naples, Marco Island, restrict you to three short term rentals. This is like a common thing: three short term rentals, and they got to be at least thirty days long. Okay. So that kind of takes out weekly Airbnbs. Or Marco daily, Island yeah. would be perfect with with some of the high rises that are on the beach for weeklies. But owners there don't want people coming in and out, in and out, in and out. Right. And 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 Airbnbs obviously have that little bit of a party atmosphere at times. For sure. And then number 13 is Montreal, Quebec. Number 14 is New York City. 
15, Oahu. York makes a lot of sense to me. Definitely. Hawaii. And then 16, Palm Springs, California. 17 is Palo Alto. Palo Palo Alto. Alto. Wow. I'm so glad you messed that up because I'm sure somebody's (laughs) going to laugh in the comments that Nicole didn't know what Palo Alto was. Palo Alto. Why are they going to make fun of me for not knowing Palo Alto? I'm so glad I let you do that. Well, Palo Alto, Silicon Mm -hmm. Valley, you know. Palo Palo Alto. It's just a lot of moving of the the cheeks. Number 18 is Park Township, Michigan. We've got 19 at Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine, another, like people like to go there and and spend a weekend. That's a, for short-term rentals, that'd be a prime market. I'm, I'm not an expert in Portland, Maine, but it's called the vacation state too. Yeah. And and I'm not an expert on Portland, Maine. A lot of people like going there, enjoy it. I'm certain there's not an abundance of hotels. Uh, I, yeah, potentially. I bet you they, I bet you there's a decent amount of hotels up there in Portland. Isn't that where L.L. Bean is? Oh, that's Freeport. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't imagine Portland being like just having tons and tons of hotels. Yeah, true. Then 20, we got Red Hook, New York. 21 is Santa Rosa, Florida, uh, California. Sorry. Uh, 22 is Sarasota, Florida. 23 Mm -hmm. is Steamboat Springs, Colorado. We got 24 at Tybee Island, Georgia. And number 25 comes in at Weehawken, New Jersey. There you go. Good job, Nicole. Thank you. Give give Nicole a, it's like a uh, spelling round of applause bee. in the comments. It's like a spelling hit, bee. You know, I did the, it. Hit the thumbs up if you think Nicole's good. All right. Better me than you. So as more of these cities continue to crack down on Airbnbs, and I can I believe over the next decade this is going to be a trend, yep. a theme for a lot of cities, small towns to say, you know what? We need to restrict Airbnbs. We want to really you know, our, our full-time citizens, we want to give them the experience that they want. Now there's going to be a debate. Okay. If you want to restrict Airbnbs, what what are you doing to people coming in and having the ability to spend money at our small businesses? Are you hurting the small business right. when you restrict Airbnbs? But I believe there's going to be more municipalities than less over the next decade that say, we want to restrict Airbnbs. So with that, Nicole, is Airbnb a good investment? Have too many people tried to, you know, make this this investment and and are bu- too bullish on this into the future where they're like, I'm buying single family homes, I'm making them Airbnbs, and I'm confident in my return. What are your thoughts? I still think that it's a I still think it's a great investment. Um, it's interesting though because I I can see um, you're talking about municipalities like actual states. I see a lot more associations probably hopping in here for sure and probably restricting. You know, especially in our area, we got some beach communities like they'll probably start doing some restricting. But at the end of the day, I mean, I, I still think it's a good investment. I, I think that there's a lot of parts again, and I'm just sort of speaking to our you know our area here. You know, they rely heavily on the seasonal traffic. So, oh, um, for sure. to, to, to re, I mean, there's restaurants and stores that close during the winter. Um, that's how seasonal these areas are. So I still think it's a great investment. I guess like what's the worst side, you know, uh, of it is, you know, what do, what do you, you got to do an annual rental? I mean, I still think that there is an upside, um, to carrying, you know, some sort of investment property, whether it is the Airbnb or again, if it's, if it's, you know, a lot more of a long-term rental, but my advice for people who are passionate about investing in single family homes for the short term rental use would be to run your numbers as if you were going to go on an annual lease, right? You just you just talked about that, Nicole. Yeah. The annual. Yep. I'd run if, as an investor or somebody advising investors, you know, agents that are like, hey, you want to really make sure your numbers work. Let's run the numbers on an annual lease because if in five years you're restricted to go Airbnb. You don't want to run your numbers on having 50 weeks airbnb would out. Right. I think having other alternative uses for this property is a safe move for investors. And then as other, you know, think about this, even if Airbnbs aren't restricted and you can go into it and continue to do it, how about the competition of others diluting the cost, you know, what you can charge for your Airbnb by coming in and buying up a bunch of these homes. We got to show this vid- visual that Thousand Watt uh, tweeted out uh, recently yep. on, on their Twitter. Thou- Thousand Watt's a branding agency in real estate, and they they screenshotted Texas Runner DFW, so Dallas Fort Worth area uh, Texas Runner. I'm assuming an agent, but 2021. 
there's a shortage, uh, there's a structural housing shortage. We didn't build enough homes for millennials. Mm -hmm. Okay. 2022. Oh, really? There's a map of, here's a map of all the Airbnb listings in LA area. And you can see here, if you're, if you're on YouTube, uh, you can see on the screen that there is just what seems like a million red dots uh, covering well, Los Angeles. There's, you can't even tell that they're dots because there's so many on top of each other. It's just red blotches red bl on the map. Yeah, it's definitely blotchy. They're having a breakout. This this is a this is beyond breakout. Yeah, this is, you know, this is not, uh, this is not good. And so you're looking at the map, the Airbnb inventory there in LA, and it's crazy to think that there's that much inventory. That certainly is an overabundance of supply, right? Which is going to bring your what you can bring in on a nightly or weekly rental on Airbnb down. It's gonna right. it's gonna bring that that number down for sure. So you you want to take that into consideration when you're investing in these properties. I do think that ultimately um, these numbers do come down. Airbnb as a company is doing quite well. They've been profitable. That they're, they're doing they're doing fantastic. Yeah. Uh, right now, even in a market that's stock market that's declining. So this is nothing. You know, I, I'm not concerned if I'm investing into Airbnb, but if I'm investing into single Airbnbs. I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, I'd want to have other uses and I wouldn't want to just rely solely on 50 weeks of Airbnbs being rented out for the next 10 years. I, I don't think you can bank on that for the next 10 years outside of a very particular market, but, but on the averages, I wouldn't be banking on that. So uh, I don't think that, I don't think this is a racket because I think these towns have the right to do and these associations have the right to do what they want to do. Right. Uh, but it'd be a racket to not consider these if you were investing or advising investors. Nicole, racket yep. number two. Yep. 92% of millennials say that inflation has altered their home buying plans. This is on nowbam.com. We'll link it up below. Real Estate Witch issued the 2023 edition of their Millennial Home Buyer Report, showing some changes in millennial home buying habits and concerns. What are they? Uh, let's go through them all. 71% okay. say they find buying a home stressful and overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so seven out of 10 buyers, agents, listen mm -hmm. up, seven out of 10 buyers are saying buying a home, the process is not only stressful, but overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this is nothing new though. I mean, what do they say? Like the, no. the, the top five most stressful things? Right? Yeah, and it's in Death. there. It's in the top three. Uh, yeah, marriage, divorce. I mean, Ma marriage, divorce, same thing. Yeah, death, and then uh, and then moving. Right. So, yeah. it's an opportunity to address that up front. Acknowledge that fear up front. If you know seven out of ten yeah. buyers are going to feel this way, uh, fifty-one percent say the home search process has reduced <laughs> them to tears. Forty-four percent uh, say home shopping has a negative impact on their personal relationships. Okay. Um, Here's 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 an interesting one, and then we've got um, expectations and regrets uh, for millennials. But before we get to that, how inflation has specifically changed home buying? Fifty nine percent are saving more money now before mm -hmm. they buy a home. So six out of ten are saying, "I'm going to go save more money." More money. Thirty six percent are planning to spend more on a home. Yep. Twenty eight percent are delaying their purchase of a home altogether. Buying a fixer upper twenty six percent. Buying a smaller home twenty five percent. Okay. Uh, and I touched on that yesterday on the hot sheet, Nicole. Okay. But what we're about to get into, I didn't touch on at all in the hot sheet. So okay. let's go a little bit deeper here. Uh, home buyer beliefs. What are, what are the millennial home buyer beliefs, Nicole? 43% uh, of them worry they'll have to pay for major repairs. 41% mm. worry about unexpected or hidden costs of ownership, home ownership. And then 39% worry that they won't be able to find a home they can afford. Yeah, and that speaks to like, hey, twenty six percent are going to buy a fixer upper, but four uh, over four out of ten are are worried they're going to have to pay for this major concern. So they're going into fixer upper, right? And they're like, okay, I'll take on the paint, I'll, I'll maybe do the floors, you know, I'll spend some weekends, you know, sprucing this puppy up, but I don't want to go have a major concern. I don't want to go, you know, change a oil burner all right. the way over to gas, yep, and redo the entire heating system, yep. 
or like doing, or the like unexpected. I'm doing right now, well, Nicole. I mean, you're you're choosing a, to. <laughs> I think I was advi- was I advised to do that? Well, we were. It, it wasn't unexpected. I mean, it was it was planned. It's great. It's great. It's great. I like Nicole gives me so much confidence in spending money. It's great. Expectations and regrets in the millennial home buyer report. What are those? So only 42% of millennials expect to make multiple offers on a home down 52% from 2022. Only That's interesting, right? It because is we're, very we're seeing interesting. multiple offers come back up again yep. here in January. Yep. Only 29% expect a bidding war, which is down 47% from 2022. So they've been following the market the last six months. And these are millennials' expectations. Okay, less millennials expect to be in a multiple offer situation. And far less millennials expect to be in a bidding war here in January 2023. But what have we seen since the beginning of January? Multiple offers and bidding wars. And in median price points where millennials are likely to be shopping, we've seen just that. Right. And so making sure that your millennial home shopper, your buyer, your client understands what's going on in your local market in those median price points is going to be really important for expectations before you go out and start shopping. Because if their belief is I'm not going to be in those situations because the market's different and then they go make their first offer and you come back and tell them, oh, there's 20 other offers. Yeah, And you lost it. They're going to be (laughs) shell-shocked. Right. For sure. But that's what's happening in a lot of markets, interestingly well, enough, especially absolutely. in the Northeast, for sure. I think what you need to do, obviously, is be prepared for the follow-up conversation of that. You know, I mean, if they do lose one, it's now really, I mean, again, they're hiring you as an advisor, not for someone just to continue to coddle, because it seems like some of these millennials are being coddled if they're being drawn mm. to dream. Well, they're being drawn to tears over this. So anyway, all right, so we're moving on, right? So since 2014, millennials have bought more homes than any generation. Uh, 80, biggest buyer generation out there. We've well, yeah, I feel like we've known that for a few years, but eighty-two percent of millennial home buyers have at least one regret from their first home purchase. Did you have a regret? Have you? Are you regretting? Have you regretted? Did you regret? Uh, I've I've had a multiple regrets on this last purchase. That yeah, we're, we're just tearing apart. Nicole's Ooh. doing a great job. I don't know. We gotta. You're really a Debbie Downer. On my, Jeepers, on my such YouTube a Debbie Downer. I'm heading there at, at 12:30, so I'll I'll snag some for you. Uh, for 20, uh, for 22, percent the for the most common regret is that their mortgage rate is too high. Hmm. 63 percent plan to refinance their mortgage when rates go down. 21 percent regret not being more educated about the home buying process. Uh, 26% admit they're not knowledgeable about home buying. 30% admit they're not knowledgeable about the mortgage process. And 82% plan to find a knowledgeable real estate when they're ready to buy a home. Yeah. Hmm. Nicole, you know what's great about this article? What's that? And uh, BAM staff did a great job Such a great putting job. this together. Mm-hmm. Is all of these bullet points could be email subject lines. Yep. You could take these and you know use these to your advantage to get attention on a piece of content uh to start a conversation with you right uh so i'd be looking at all this stuff taking it into consideration how does it relate to your market yeah and you know what can you do with that information to help people make the best decisions whether they're selling buying or buying or investing i mean even a video though i think each bullet point not just is an email but it's certainly is certainly video content i don't think this whole article has to be one video i think you could probably break it down into each bullet point and there you go you have almost nine weeks worth of content just in this one article uh you got more than yeah you've got like 40 videos right there so yeah if you're lacking content i I never get that argument i I, I don't know I can't find the content. The one article, we just found 40 videos. So, yep. so there you go. There you go. All right, left, middle, right. Uh, these are the headlines in politics that you, as a real estate professional, entrepreneur, agent, need to know right now. You need to be watching the hot sheet live every single day as well. But let's go over some of the big headlines, Nicole. All right, so Microsoft, this is a CNBC article. Microsoft announces new multi-billion dollar investment in chat G. PT maker open AI. Yeah, I put this one in there for you, Nicole. For Microsoft announced this new multi-year, multi-billion dollar deal just yesterday. The investment is the third phase of the partnership following Microsoft's previous investments in 2019, 2021. And Nicole, you are just fascinated 
in the world of AI right now. Uh, my you are my husband like, and I are having way too much fun with this yeah, at night. This is how you spend your nights now? <laughs> well, it is dry January. AI? So it's, you know, you're, you're, you fixate on other things. And this is one of them that we do at night. Yeah, it's fun. I think it was about six weeks ago we did a walkthrough episode where we wrote a listing description live. Yep. On uh, and, and this was at the very beginning when, when this came out, Bobby, our video producer with BAM, he, he was like all over this when it first came out. He, yeah. he, he was one of the first people that introduced it mm -hmm. to me. And it, I mean, for listing descriptions, this is a game obvious, changer. Yeah. Yeah. A game yeah. changer. But also if you're trying to like figure out maybe copy or you know, something for an well, ad. That was how it, I'll be honest. That's how it really started with my husband and I, 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 I was upstairs and he was downstairs and I was doing my copy and I wanted to make sure that my sentence made sense. Cause he's my grammar guy. I'm not a, I'm not a grammar girl. And I sent it to him. And then all of a sudden minutes later, he spits out like three paragraphs for me. And I'm like, I'm just trying to come up with a, a line for my IG post. And there he had it, this whole housing description. So that's, Again, all just from one sentence that I sh I sent him. It was this fascinating. Is just the, this is just the beginning of the gold rush on AI. There's going to be so many other features and uses in the AI world that are yeah. going to continue to be released throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, Bam, we're doing an ebook with Chris Smith on everything you need to know AI 101. So look for that here in the in the next coming weeks and start integrating it into your business. Don't wait. You know, don't be that like person that waited two years to get on Facebook when it comes to AI. Really start testing this. This is going to be an advantage uh, for, for everybody. For sure. Every business. All right. So the next one is Fox Business. Uh, New York, California suffer biggest blow as more Americans flee to low tax states. And you read the next two. So yeah, that oh, one. Oh yeah, we do then... that one. And then New York Post has one. California Democrats consider wealth tax, including for people who moved out of the state. You hear that, you're like, okay, that makes no sense. New York and California suffer the biggest blow as Americans flee to low tax states. But then California now is considering punishing people for who leaving. Leave. Yeah. Well, so maybe you say, okay, well, that makes sense because they're suffering the biggest blow and they want to tax people on their on their way out. But as the New York Post uh, reports and, and others, this is going to start as early as January 2024 for California. Okay, so so we might start actually taxing people that leave next year. Oh, so here's a year head start, Californians, where you can leave tax free, where you can go to one of these lower tax states. The trend has been people leaving New York and California uh, for states like Florida, for states like Texas. This has been uh, you know a multiple year trend. Illinois is included in that bunch with California and New York. Uh, people that have, or places that they have gone to, Florida, Texas, South Dakota, Tennessee, and Nevada, they don't impose an individual income tax. And so people are going there to reduce, especially in these inflationary times, reduce what they have to pay to the government, okay? Arizona, an another one. Uh, in that Fox Business article, it goes through that U-Haul study. And so... I don't know if I'm an agent in California, I'm spending the next year, I'm spending the next year saying, hey, this is what's coming January, 2024, uh, this wealth tax, okay, here are your, here's your opportunity to list now, mm. you know, here's the information. <laughs> Sell <laughs> have before a conversation. you can't. <laughs> Listen, every California agent tells me they need more inventory. So use this to your advantage and go get the inventory. If you need the more inventory, so many people want to move and you know buy into California. Well, and there's but there's also enough Airbnbs. So sell your house. There's plenty of Airbnbs. Take, take take on a yeah, like rent out an Airbnb maybe long term, or you can hop around. You could just you know be a nomad. I can't see Cal. I can't see that being a good decision for California. Let me know if you disagree in the comments. You, you think this is this wealth tax on people leaving? is going to get people to stay. You think this works to their benefit? Love to know your opinion on that. Uh, there we go, Nicole. That's the real word. That, that is, is the real word. That's the re that's the realest word you Ever. can get. That's as close to me getting into politics as you will see. Hmm. That's, that's not true. That is true. Yeah. It's very true, Nicole. Okay. Why do you have uh, examples of, of? No, 
No, I speak I, no, other? not at all. No, you like hmm. to get your teeth. You like to get your toes wet. Just a little bit. Yeah, just. I'm not a big. I'm not a big flip flop guy. No, you just got to feel it out. Is it? Is it hot? Is yeah. it cold? Yeah. Yeah, I like warm water. Yeah, I like warm water too. Keep right. it in the middle. All right. Uh, very good. Thank you guys. Uh, today, if you're seeing this show live right after this three o'clock, we've got a uh, live stream with KCM three o'clock today. This premieres at two o'clock every single Tuesday. So if you're not subscribed to BAM YouTube, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the premieres of The Real World. And then today at three, we've got that live stream. If you're hearing this or watching this after the fact, you can go search the live tab on at now BAM on YouTube and get that live stream. Nicole, great show. You, great you really show. brought it today. I brought it. You're looking taller. I am looking taller and I have a, my, my, my background's matching yours a little bit better today. So yeah. our game is, what is it? What are you saying this year? Keep uh, forgetting. Lock in. Lock, we have it locked in. Yeah. Lock yeah. in and we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Keep it real. See you guys.